let's stand and turn to number 881, the Apostles' Creed, and read together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please remain standing as we turn to number 374, Standing on the Promises.
Good morning. Good morning. The lesson I read this morning is Hebrews 11 through 14, 19 through 25. And every priest standeth daily, ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins, forever sat down on the right hand of God. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies, he made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiness by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Amen. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It's good to be in God's house this morning. This morning on our announcements, our children will be dismissed following the doxology today. That's for our five and under, and Carla is our uh, nursery worker today. We'll have a brief board meeting immediately after morning worship service here in the sanctuary. You're invited to stay for chili after our worship service for a special celebration for Pastor Larry's recent accomplishment of receiving his board certification. We'll have a special Christmas choir practice on Wednesday, December the 8th at 6.30, and the choir will perform on Sunday, December the 12th. Our Wednesday night Bible study is at 6 o'clock. Our current theme is Walking in Confidence. We have fellowship and pizza at 5.30. Bible study is at 6. This morning is uh, our return of our Operation Shoe Boxes, and we have several here on the altar and we'll talk about those again in just a few minutes. If you were part of the cantata in 2021, which is this year, had to be another yeah, time. The cantata we didn't have. The cantata we didn't have <laughs> called Come Let Us Adore Him. If you still have this CD in your possession, please bring those back to the church whenever you can. I think I saw mine in the glove compartment the other day. Mm -hmm. So if you got yours, bring those back for we'll us. Use it next year. And we might be able to do that next year. This morning on our prayer list, we have several that we want to mention, several listed on our prayer list. Uh, we want to especially remember Shannon Deskins. She fell from a tree stand yesterday and is in UK hospital. Vanessa's neighbor that passed away leaving children. We need to pray for that situation. Sandy Walter's brother, Rick Coates, has cancer. And Sandy Walter's mother has uh, found out this week, so her name's Suzanne, that she has a mass. And Sandy's been very sick this week, so remember Sandy. Also, Amanda Tom, uh, Van Hoos sent us a message that her husband's brother, Jason, was in a terrible accident yesterday dealing with hot tar. tar. It blowed back on him and he is severely burned. Uh, she sent Sandy a message this morning and said, Mark talked to Jason, and Jason told Mark that he'd never be the same, said his hands look like pure meat, raw meat. He, he's in severe pain, his chest is burnt, his face, his head. He's in very bad shape. His wife is with him because he was in North Carolina when this happened. So remember Jason and his family and Mark as well. We also want to remember my cousin's husband, Russell Thompson, is in the hospital in Louisa with COVID pneumonia and is very ill. We have some praises today. Tim Skidmore is off the vent, and uh, Stevie Joe Litz came, had some tests, and they all came back good. Any other spoken prayer requests? Um, Heather Owens, who many know throughout the County of Prestonsburg, she is having some complications in her pregnancy, so she's in the UK. Uh, at the hospital right now for the next hopefully a couple months because they are trying their best to get her to 32 weeks so they're praying mm -hmm. for that that's heather owens is having pregnancy complications so remember her and the baby in prayer anything else 
At this time, our pastor is going to show us a video about the Operation Shoebox mission, and then he will lead us in prayer. So we, uh, every year, we've, been, we've done this for several years now. I don't know how long we've been doing this. Every member. Uh, uh, but uh, we ask people to, to take those home and bring them back, and it does look beautiful up here. But they're not going to stay here. Uh, as you can see behind us on the screen, this is an actual picture of one of our drop-offs uh, at the Mita Church, where it's one of the drop-offs point, and uh, we will be taking those there on the 15th, maybe? Today's the 15th, right? No, today's the 14th. Yes. Yeah. All right. I was right. Okay. <laughs> Write that one down. <laughs> so, uh, and I know that because the 15th is my birthday, so. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll be taking those uh, off, and, and we, in just a moment, we have a video uh, that we're going to show of that, and then we'll, we'll pray over them. So, again, thank you for being a blessing to someone else. Let's watch the video at this time. Gifts that are represented here that will go 
for different parts of the world. And, and Lord, really all of those that are in different churches that will be collected and distributed. I do pray, God, that it would put a smile on some child's face. And also, Lord, put uh, the hope that many of us have uh, through Jesus Christ. That, God, that there is someone that loves them and someone who cares for them. And I want to pray, God, that you just bless them now. And bless our service today, Lord, as we uh, continue to uh, think about, Lord, the fact that our lives matter and that uh, we matter to God. I pray for everyone here today. I pray for these prayer requests that have been lifted up here today. And I ask you, Lord, to help us as we continue uh, to serve you. And, uh, Lord, even when we fail you, we know that you forgive us and you love us. And so, Lord, we pray as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. So we're going to mention that our offering today, uh, you know, we have the plates in the back. And uh, so we don't re pass the plates, but you're welcome to, uh, to drop the offering out uh, on the way in or out. And so at this time, we'll go ahead and let uh, Carla loose. Uh, wait, just a minute. Something has been sort of thrown out of sequence here. We need to say happy birthday to Pastor Larry because tomorrow is his birthday. So if the children want to stay just for a second and we'll... Okay. Well, say happy birthday to Pastor Larry. Does anybody else have a birthday? The last Richie had one. Did we sing to you last week? Yep. Yeah. Well, this weekend, anybody and, have and a the, birthday? Hi, Okay. We want to invite everyone to stay. I know, as you already mentioned, this this really was uh, Tina's idea to do this, and so we we went with. I'm always open to a, a good dinner. So, uh, and by the way, we have some really good hot sauce. If anybody wants to try it down there. <laughs> So much, and uh, so we're going to sing our doxology. And Richie, if you don't mind, uh, you could say the prayer after their doxology.
God bless you. You may be seated. And uh, we don't have a song uh, per se. Uh, Ron, if you want to come up and... I know it says there's a typo in the bulletin that Sandy's going to do the laity moment, but that was last week and I forgot to uh, take it up. So our scripture text is taken from Mark chapter 13, beginning of the first verse. As he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will all this be? And what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdoms. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the scriptures that give us the omens, Father, the things that we might watch for. We pray that we might be vigilant. We pray that you would bless the message that our pastor has as he opens the scriptures and explains them to us. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. The things that I love and hold dear to my heart, they're just borrowed, they're not mine at all. Jesus only let me use them to brighten my life, so remind me, remind me, dear Lord. Roll back the curtain of memory now and then. Show me where you brought me from and where I could have been. Remember I'm human and humans forget. So remind me, remind me dear Lord. So sometimes it's what we do, a lot of what we do in preaching is just to remind people. I mean, I think 99% of preaching is not really teaching you something you don't already know, although that can possibly happen. But it's reminding you of things you do already know and reinforcing things that you may have not thought about in a while and reinforcing those truths. And that's a lot of what Jesus did. We're, we're doing a, a training at work that's called Universal Skills Training. And, uh, and I've heard people say things like, you know, I already know all this. Uh, it almost sounds like you're saying I know everything. But anyway, uh, and some of it we do know. Some of it we're already doing. But we can always do better. And so as we think about why we come to church and why we listen to sermons, uh, a lot of times it's not because we're not doing anything right. It's because we want to be reminded and reinforced of those values and beliefs that we already have. And sometimes we get all, you know, a little slack and get off kilter a little bit. And we just need someone to kind of maybe gently nudge us or sometimes even shake us to remind us what we need to do. And so we are uh, on the series here, uh, A Life That Matters. This is a, a series uh, suggested by the uh, discipleship, the United Methodist Discipleship. And uh, the, the sermon today is not one stone. And it begins, as Ron read a little bit ago, with the scriptures and, and the, the disciples are walking around and look at these massive buildings and 
They look up and say, teacher, look what large stones and what large buildings. And, you know, Mark is not, uh, he has a way of uh, kind of showing the human side of, of the disciples, almost making them look comical sometimes. And I can just imagine them looking at these massive buildings, and I think of, you know, somebody like Gomer Pyle thinking, golly, look at all those buildings. Shazam! You know, I mean, they're just totally impressed with these massive buildings that have been erected. And as they're standing there looking at all that, just, they're just uh, amazed. And, and I'm, I imagine that they're thinking, you know, nothing could bring these buildings down. I think of some of our, some of the architect and the things that we have made with our hands and buildings that we've created that we thought nothing could bring down. Uh, you know, the Titanic, of course, that they said God himself couldn't sink this ship and we know what happened. Uh, the Empire, I mean, the, uh, the Twin Towers and some of those things that, that were marvels uh, of ingenuity and, and architectural de design was just wonderful, but yet we were all amazed at how quickly they crumbled. And I think if we don't get anything else out of this today, we need to see this, is that our faith should not be in the temples, buildings, institutions, but our faith should be in Christ today. And so they say, look what massive stones and what large stones. And then Jesus asked them, do you see these great buildings? Well, <laughs> yeah, we're, that's what we're talking about. And he draws their attention and he said, just look at these massive buildings there. And he said something very interesting here. These buildings that you see, they're not always going to be here. Look, look at, here's some art, artist depictions of, of Herod's temple, just a few, few different ones. And this was actually Herod's, uh, probably uh, the second building of the temple. We know the original was destroyed and uh, in the Babylonian uh, come in and destroyed the original temple and they had to rebuild it. And then uh, Herod, when he came along, actually added to it, and you could call this a third, or a, 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 he expanded it uh, uh, quite a bit. And so he took what they did and, and just uh, made more of it. And, and so it was a massive, in those days, before you had the, the massive machines like we do today, this had to be quite a spectacle here to, to just be able to see these great, great buildings. Um, it's just quite amazing. And this is where uh, the people of God came to, to worship, really. But then Jesus says this, and it really takes them by surprise. Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. I can imagine this just took the breath away because they're like, this is where they did everything. This is where worship was the center of. And, you know, they, they did the, offered the first fruits, they, the Pentecost, and, um, you know, they offered sacrifices. And uh, all of the worship came out of this. And they're like, what are we going to do without a temple? How can we continue to worship God with, without a temple? And Jesus is saying that not one throne, or not one stone will be left upon another. And you know, sometimes uh, we understand that, you know, not everything in the, in the Bible is literal, and that sometimes Jesus uses hyperbole, you know, did he really mean every stone? And, and yet, uh, I think in this case, you could, you could make a case that it truly did come to pass. In 70 AD, the temple was destroyed. And uh, as the, the Romans come in and conquered the city, they say that uh, the gold that, you know, with a great fire there actually melted and ran in between the, the stones and that they turned every stone apart to get to the gold. And so uh, it, it turns out that Jesus was quite right here in literal uh, on this. So this must have been uh, something that just took them back when he said that. So... And they're kind of walk, they take, they take a walk and walk just a little further. And then now they're looking out from the Mount of Olives 
opposite the temple, and there's Peter, James, John, and Andrew. And once they got him just alone, then they begin to ask a question that they've been wanting to ask. And that is the question that many of us ask, and that is, when? When is this going to happen? What will be the signs? How will we know? And I think maybe in many ways it was the wrong question. It wasn't the right question to ask. We've been asking that question ever since Jesus told us things were going to happen, ever since we read things in the book of Revelation and different things. When? And for centuries, people have been making predictions, and every time their predictions have come to be false. But we can look back through church history and see not just Christians, but uh, you know, all kinds of different religions who have prophesied and, and said, this is the date. They, some of them did a mathematical formula and figured out that this was the date that Jesus was going to come back, that all these things would be fulfilled. And we know that people have you know, sold their possessions, and, and some people have committed suicide, all kinds of crazy stuff, because they believed that this was, it was the end. And I think maybe the question shouldn't be when, but what? Jesus said no one knows the day or the hour, right? We don't know. So instead of saying when will these things be, maybe we should say what should we be doing until that happens? And you remember the, uh, when the disciples, when Jesus was taken from the earth, and the disciples would stand there gazing into the heavens, and the angel says, why do you stand here gazing into the heavens? Don't do that. The same Jesus who came, who left this earth, will also come back. And in the meantime, we need to be busy doing what God would have us do. And so some people get so caught up on prophecy that it takes all of their mind and their time. They're obsessed with it. And, uh, you know, I've read some books that, you know, have all these ideas about how it's going to happen and, and many of those books and authors have come and gone and they're now collecting dust and I think Jesus would say to us you're asking the wrong question you're, you're worried about the wrong thing don't be worried about when but what what should I be doing until he comes back and Jesus began to say to them beware that no one leads you astray there's going to be people that will try to uh, tell you all kinds of things and to try to get you um, off track, if you will, on doing what you're supposed to be doing. But Jesus said, don't let that happen. He said, many will come in my name. There will, become, there will be many who will come either saying that I am the Christ or they're saying I'm coming in the name of Christ, on behalf of the Christ. Follow me. And many people will worship them and follow them. And we've seen it. We've seen the David Koresh's. We've seen the Jim Joneses. We've seen all those. And even some today, maybe uh, some of the mega pastors. I I'm not saying they're necessarily wrong, but Jesus is saying, don't follow them. Listen, if you follow me or follow a preacher, you may be led the wrong way. Don't follow me. I'm just a person like you are. Follow Christ. That's what Jesus is saying. So when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, Jesus said, don't be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still not come. So Jesus is saying just the opposite of what a lot of people say. Have you ever noticed that any, every time something bad happens, and it happened during a pandemic, it, it happens any time something uh, serious happens that people begin to say, well, this means the Lord's coming back. This, this is a sign. And Jesus said there's, a, there's going to be all kinds of bad things that will happen. And maybe even intensify. There will be wars. Uh, there will be all kinds of problems. Earthquakes in diverse places, he says. But this is not the end. Don't say this is it. He said this is not the end. This is just the birth pains, he says. And he says, notice what he says, do not be alarmed. Sometimes we use uh, the end of time, we talk about those things, and we use it on people in order to cause fear. And, and I've seen a lot of these uh, churches, and I remember going to one myself when I was, you know, years ago, that used these uh, judgment-type plays 
these are judgment house type plays. Um, a lot of churches do these, and and uh, you know what they do is they, they get in there and they show you uh, scenes of people being thrown into hell and all these things, and, and they definitely scare people and scare a lot of children into coming to these and, and, and making a profession of faith. Uh, but Jesus wasn't about trying to scare the hell out of you. Jesus was about trying to love you into heaven. And I believe that he says here is do not be alarmed. He's saying when these things happen, I don't want you to be afraid. I don't want you to be scared. I want you to just know that I'm with you, and this is what I want you to do. Don't be alarmed. And so many people use fear in order to get people to make a profession of faith instead of love. But he said, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes. There will be famines. It's just the beginning of birth pains. And we all know that in the beginning uh, of someone who is having a child, there, there are Eventually, you will begin to have some pain, some birth pains. I've, I don't know this experientially, but I've been told. And that it can get worse and worse until the delivery. Jesus is saying, you know, when all these things begin to happen, it doesn't mean it's the end. It means it's the beginning of what he called the travail, the birth pain. And so, as we think about it... Um, all of the things that are happening in this world, as we think about the massive structures that have been built and kingdoms of this world that have come and gone, it's hard to imagine a world without all these things. It's hard to imagine a world without uh, what we know. And yet we found, even during the pandemic, how possible that is for our world to be turned upside down in a moment of time. We sometimes feel so, so much false security because we've been so blessed for so long. And then something like a pandemic can put us on our knees and stop churches and stop businesses and stop us from doing what we normally did. It was a world turned upside down and it happened overnight. And if that could happen, then we realize how vulnerable we really are. If something like a virus can do some, something so devastating to us. So we are vulnerable people and we realize that and yet we're not to live our lives in fear and to think, well, I don't know what to do. This, these bad things are happening, terrible things happen. Jesus said, don't be afraid. He also said, I'm, I'll go with you always, even into the end of the world. You and I have a responsibility to do what we're supposed to be doing and to continue serving God and making disciples of all nations, as he said. That's our job. That's our mission. And it's not to focus on when these things are going to happen and to focus and, and just dwell on prophecy and all these things. It's okay to read that stuff. It's okay to understand a little bit as we understand it. But the reality of is we'll never figure it out. It's beyond us. And Jesus never told us the answer of when it would happen. So when the disciples asked the question, he really ignored their question and began to talk about some of the other things. Many will come in my name. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. I remember, uh, I told you about one, one of the churches I, I used to pastor where the, we had a, a massive building that was almost collapsed and we had to find a place to have services for several months. At another church I was uh, at, uh, the Paintsville First United Methodist Church, I wasn't the pastor. I was the uh, youth pastor and the temporary worship leader there. And thankfully it wasn't during church. But they had these huge, uh, uh, the, the dry, it wasn't drywall, it was the old plaster that was really, really heavy plaster. Fall one Sunday, or one day through the week. Thankfully it wasn't during church. And it fell and just landed on <laughs> on the seats. And it, it uh, was a lot of damage. And so we, they couldn't have church for a long time. So we had church in the uh, Family Life Center, which was a gymnasium. It did have a stage. And, and it actually turned out that we grew during that time. And it, and it was a, a blessed time. But I remember somebody saying, I can't wait till we get back to the real church. And... 
You know, what we have to understand is this, is that church is not a building. Church is a people. We make up the church. And, and, you know, with all the things that's going on today, you know, people talk about, you know, what happens to our building. And, you know, in, in scope of eternity, it don't really matter because the church is a people. You know, we've been talking about selling our house lately, and moving into another house that uh, Paul and Tina own, and, and we're kind of contemplating that, trying to get that in, in line, and it's really, uh, you know, uh, kind of a, a nervous time, but it's also exciting and all that as we think about it. And, and Sandy wanted to make sure that Adam, was, uh, Adam and them were okay with that, because they lived, that's where they were born and raised, in that, that home. And I think she said that she talked to, uh, to Adam about it, um, and one of the things that he said really impressed me was, you know, home is wherever you are. Home is where you are. As we think about it today, all the things that we see are just temporary. And home is where God is, right? And we're all going to, the, the Bible says, a, a place or the city where the builder and maker is God. And there'll be no light because he is the light of that city. And wherever Jesus is, that's where I want to be. And so I'm not following a person. I'm not even following a, 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 a building. I'm following Jesus because he's my God. And so today I encourage you to do the same thing. I, I remember reading a story about um, a couple actors that were doing a, a kind of a comedy skit. And Mel Brooks was one of those. But they did this skit where uh, they were talking about um, kind of what happened when, when they were, uh, he, I think he was a, a Jewish person, and he said he was like a, a person who was worshiping a guy. And he said, was there ever a time that you, you didn't worship God? <laughs> and this is a comedy, but he said, yeah, there was a time when we worshiped a guy named Phil. He's like, a guy named Phil? He said, yeah, we worshipped a guy named Phil. And he said, uh, well, how did that work? When did you finally start worshipping God? And he said, well, one day Phil was standing there and got hit by a lightning bolt. And we stood around Phil and realized Phil's dead. And we said to ourselves, there's something bigger than Phil. <laughs> and then we started worshipping God. Not a true story, but the point is this. There's something bigger than you and I. There's something bigger than feel. And there's something bigger than what we see around us today. And that's what we need to put our trust in. We don't trust in temples. We don't put our trust in institutions. And, you know, I think about we're getting ready to have a little celebration for just something that, you know, I've been working on for a while. And I'm glad of that. Uh, you know, it, it's an accomplishment, and we should recognize each other's accomplishments and all that. But the truth of the matter is, all of our degrees and all of our trophies and all of the things that we hang on the wall ain't going to mount to hill of beans one day. The Bible says that we're going to fall on our faces, and we're going to confess that Jesus is Lord. And that we're going to cast our trophies and our crowns at His feet and say, Worthy is the Lamb. For you alone are worthy. And so today we realize who we really are and whose we really are. I want to ask the musicians to come. We get a song today. The invitation is always open. If you want to pray, you can pray right where you are. And those that are here can come up front. But I want you to know that there's nothing more important than knowing that God loves you and He wants a relationship with you. Today, as we sing. Let us stand as we turn to number 405, Seek Ye First.
invite, uh, I'm going to ask Paul to uh, dismiss us in prayer and also bless the food. And everyone's welcome, invited to stay afterwards. Father, thank you for this time together. Thank you for the time, Lord, for the time to worship you. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the name of Thank you for all your great riches you shed upon us. Thank you for all your blessings of life. For each one here today, Lord, each family representing. Thank you for our pastor, Lord, for the special time of celebration, accomplishments in his life, his birthday. And once again, we thank you, Lord, for your great love toward us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son. Pray in his name. Amen. 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 John, let's sing number 664, sent forth by God's blessing.